Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your sons and daughters, and empower us all with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. 
Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirits upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and the prison whose those from the prison whose who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass. And new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Now Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good morning. Oh. And Grace, I think you need to show everybody your puppy and your Dalmatian. No, that's not your puppy or your Dalmatian, silly. I know, I know. Here, Grace got a new, a new puppy. And can you, here, can I, can I hold them for a minute? Okay, we'll show up everybody. Whoop. Okay, Grace got a new puppy. Its name is Dalmatian. You maybe can't tell which is the old one and which is the new one because they look a lot alike. <laughs> We're going to talk about things that look alike this morning. And I have some pictures here. Oh, and that too. There we go. <laughs> All right. I have some pictures here. 
I have a goat and a horse and a cow and a pig and a donkey and a duck and a sheep and a chicken. Okay? There's eight of them. Now, I'm going to give each of you, there's eight, oh, there's more than eight. Of, no, there are. Whoop, no, there's more than eight of you. Well, we're going to make it work here. I don't know how. Oh, I do know how. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to give each of you a baby, and then you get to find your baby's, your baby's mother or father down in that pile. So I give each of you a baby. Now you have to be, okay, now you, I want you to be careful because there are, um, there are chickens and ducks, and they're kind of close in how their babies look, and there, are, there is a donkey and there's a horse, but I'd like you to go, two of you have chickens, so if you have, if you have a chicken, you need to share the mom with somebody else. Oh, I could find another chicken mom. Go ahead, go for it, go find your animals, see if you can do it. I'm going to get another chicken mom here. Here we go. Okay. And take them both back with you. Take the mom or the dad and the baby back with you. Good job. Let's go. And then go sit back down when you found it. Okay, you find you find yours the race? Oh here's X who has a who has a chicken? I am missing it. I have an extra chicken mom. No? Oh. Chicken? Chicken? Oh. You have a oh well. Okay, we won't worry about it. Extra chicken mom. All right. Okay. Now, your animals, how could you tell that they were the same kind of animal? That it was the parent. Hmm? I, well, I didn't, but how could you tell that the, that the baby, um, what do you have there? How could you tell that the baby goat went with the mom goat, not with the, um, not with the dad donkey? Okay, so the color. Color? What else could you tell here with them? How could you tell that, how could you tell that your cows, that that was the... They have the same colors, the same spots, uh-huh. You saw it in the movie? Uh -huh. in, oh, Inside Out. Okay, yes, thank you, Jane. Well, we can, we can tell, we can tell parents and, and, and their babies by, they kind of look alike, don't they? Do you, you kind of look like one of your parents, do you think? Not at all, Declan, uh-uh, no. Do any of you look like your mom or your dad? No. Well, you know, we also don't only really look like him, but we also, that's a chicken, that's right. What's a chicken say? What's it say? Does the baby chickens and the mom chickens sound the same? Beep, 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 beep. Do they both, do they both, um, do they both scatter around in the dirt and eat bugs? Do horses, um, do horses trot? Do baby horses trot? Yeah, they do. Don't they kind of? A little bit. Not when they're just brand new babies. Well, we... That doesn't match. That doesn't match. Well, there's a mom and a baby. That's why they don't match exactly. We, we are children of God. In baptism, and today we remembered our baptism with the water. In baptism, we are made God's children. And we might not look just like God does. We don't even know what God looks like. But we can do the things that God does. We can love people like God does. We can help people like God does. We can work for peace in the world like God does. We, you settle down here. We can hold grace like God does and, and hold her and so she can relax. We, God makes us his children so that we can do the things that God does. And that's a very special thing. And God loves us. God told Jesus when he was baptized, I love you, you are my beloved. And God tells you that too, that God loves you very much. So always remember that you are God's children. Let's pray. Can you fold your hands, even when I'm holding you? Okay. 
Dear God, thank you for making us your children and for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, remember all your stuff, Grace. Don't leave it up there. And you may go back to your seats. You can keep your animals or you can leave them here on my, on my bench if you want. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am my father's son. There are some ways you can tell. There are some family resemblances. Some of you might have met my father um, when he was here last spring. Um, but whether you did or not, I can assure you that um, I have his eyes. Um, so do all of his kids. They're dark brown, and they go with the dark brown hair that we used to all have when we were younger. I have my father's face, his smile, his hands, and in my aging years, I find to my horror that I have come to share his hairline, his bald spot, and his waistline. Yes, I am my father's son. You can tell. Jesus was his father's son too. Even before the heavens were opened at his baptism, even before the voice from heaven declared it, you could tell that Jesus was his father's son. He bore a striking resemblance to God himself. We all know the story of Jesus' birth from the Bible, the announcements of the angels, the journey to Bethlehem, the Virgin Mary bearing a son, Joseph naming him Jesus as the angels had commanded, the visit from the wise men who were led by a star. All these stories proclaim the truth that Jesus from the very beginning of his life was God's son the image of his heavenly father. And yet St. Matthew only dedicates eight verses in his entire book to the narrative of Jesus' birth. While St. Mark, the earliest of the four gospels, says nothing at all. It's as if the Bible is pointing us beyond Jesus' biology to an even deeper truth. And that truth is this. Being the son of God, being anyone's child, involves a lot more than the circumstances of conception. We ourselves know that that's true. We see how the bonds between parents and children are as strong and as loving in an adoptive family as they are in a biological one. We see how parenthood is a lifelong commitment, not just a one-time activity. And we see how the relationship between parents and children goes well beyond chromosomes and genes to the very essence of who we are. I am my father's son, not primarily because I look like him, but because I bear a much deeper resemblance. I share his way of speaking, which I heard as I was learning to talk. I share his faith in Jesus, with which he and my mother nurtured throughout my life. I share some of his skills, some of his interests. I followed his footsteps into the ministry. And to top it all off, I have even got his name, all 11 letters of it. I'm a Wolkenhauer, my father's son. Now, we can tell that Jesus was his father's son not primarily by the circumstances of his birth, but by the circumstances of his life, his death and his resurrection. Jesus is the one who was baptized by John in the Jordan River, the son of a God who identifies with his people. Jesus is the one who healed those who were sick and oppressed by evil, the son of a God who desires wholeness and healing for all of creation. Jesus is the one who was crucified for the sins of the world, the son of a God who will stop at nothing to forgive us and make us his own. Jesus is the one who rose from the dead, the son of a God who is the source of resurrection and hope and life. 
as we look at Jesus, as we hear his story, we encounter God. We learn how God acts toward the world he loves. No one has ever seen God, John writes. The only son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. That's one truth that we celebrate on this day of the baptism of our Lord, that Jesus Christ is God's beloved son, and that through him we can know the love and the mercy of God. But that's only part of the story. John the Baptist preached, saying, After me comes one who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Today, as we remember Jesus' baptism by John, we also remember the baptism that God has given us. Listen to these words, these promises from the service of baptism. In holy baptism, our gracious heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. Think of that. In baptism, we are joined to Jesus Christ. In baptism, we are made children of God. It's as if the heavens have been opened up again. The Spirit has descended upon you and me, and we have heard God's voice say to us, you are my beloved daughter, you are my beloved son, you are a child of God for all eternity. I am my father's son. I carry his image. I bear his name. That's true of my earthly father, and it's also true of God, my father in heaven. I bear a resemblance to him that goes deeper than life itself. In my baptism, God filled me with the Holy Spirit. So when you look at me, and when I look at you, God is there among us. When we act in the world, God's image is reflected in our lives. We are called Christians, people of Christ, children of God. This morning you were sprinkled with water from our baptismal font as a reminder that you have been claimed as God's child through baptism. Martin Luther once wrote that every time we use water, it is an occasion to remember these holy waters of belonging and life. So when you wash your face, remember your baptism. When you take a shower or a bath, give thanks that you have been claimed as a child of God. When you take a refreshing drink, think about how the waters of eternal life have been poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit. When you feel the snow or the rain, realize that God showers his grace on the whole world through us, his children. Baptism is not just a once upon a time event, something that happened to us a long time ago. It's a promise that the Holy Spirit continues to flow through our lives, that God is with us just as surely as he was with his son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we are strengthened and nourished to be all that God has created us to be. We are enabled to be beloved sons and daughters of God, with whom God is well pleased. Amen.
confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is printed on page 7 in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called to be a light to the nations, let us pray for God's justice, peace, and healing. Pour out your spirit of unity, triune God. Renew our lives in the promises of baptism. Hold us together in the oneness of the body of Christ. Empower us to be one as you are one. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal and their priest John, for St. John's Lutheran Church and their pastor Sonia, for Atonement Lutheran Church, Wyomissing, and their pastors, Greg and Julie, and deacons, Tom and Kathy. For Trinity Deaf and their leaders, Pastor Rick and Dee. And for Common Ground Ministry and their pastor, Tom. Hear us, O oh God. Pour out your spirit of life, eternal God. Move over polluted waters. Breathe on barren fields. Strengthen ancient cedars and oaks. Engage us in your care of sea, land, and sky. Hear us, O God. Pour out your spirit of wisdom, holy God. Guide politicians and military officials as they wrestle with complex situations. Grant them courage and compassion to work for peace in every nation. Hear us, O oh God. Pour out your spirit of justice, gracious God. Heal the pain of all who are victims of crime and violence. Be present with all who are imprisoned. Reconcile broken relationships within communities. Comfort the sick and their caregivers, especially Jane, Dick, Jack, Ted, Daryl, Barry, Tom, Brian, Catherine, Pat, Richard, Diana, Mark, and Walter. Hear us, O God. Pour out your spirit of love, glorious God. Sustain all who knit prayer shawls, sew silk quilts, and provide housing, 
clothes and meals for our neighbors who are homeless. Surround those who seek warmth and shelter with grace-filled advocates. Hear us, O oh God. Pour out your spirit of faithfulness, empowering God. Allow all your people to shine the light of Christ, remembering that we are your sons and daughters, called to bear your grace to the world. Bless our members, Barbara, Paul, Joan, Martha, Abby, and Emma, Peter, Deborah, Catherine, and Daniel. We praise you for the gift of new life in the birth of Cecilia Lynn and ask your blessing upon her family, Josh, Christine, and Jacinda. Fill our entire congregation with the gifts and the will to serve you faithfully in all we do. Hear us, O oh God. Pour out your spirit of peace, resurrecting God. Bring all who grieve into a community rooted in you. Uphold them with your grace and keep us all grounded in your promise of eternal life. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers in the name of Christ, the light of the world, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy, for the sake who gave himself for us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all ages, the gift of your Son who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Lord Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come and be filled with life and light. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O, o morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.